you. And welcome back. This is Horseplay Geeks and Gamers to Horseplay Live. This is May 1st, 2014. And yes, that is confirmed, by the way. This is episode 20 titled May Flower, May Mother Flowers. Hashtag Retro Friday. I am once joined again by my partner in crime and residential, residential marketing geek, Yogi Zilla. What's going on, big boy? The music! <laughs> the music. It Loud! Went, did you like... I'm sorry, dude. You said turn it all the way up. So that's what I did. <laughs> I can't hear... <laughs> He's like, I can't hear you. My camera's not even on right now, man. It's just... It's, it's just... Yeah. It was just like a last minute, like, oops. <laughs> so, but yes, guys, we do have... We are here once again. We are going to be joined by Chipzilla. Uh, Chipzilla. Chipzilla. Hashtag, oh, you know hashtag at Captain Chaos right there. He is sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, from the B Team podcast and Agents of Shieldcast. Welcome. All right, we're gonna get him right in the call right now. Yogi, it's really loud right now. Yo, Yogi. Hello. I think we should take it from this top because that was crazy. <laughs> what, 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 how was it so loud? I don't understand. You, you had the remote volume all the way down, no, all the way, you had the remote volume all the way up, and you only faded out your local volume. So it's blasting in my ears and messing up my local recordings. So sorry, guys, for listen, listening on Uncut. Yeah. I, you're going to give me a lot of work editing this week again. I'm not trying to do it on purpose, man. I really want to do it the right way. I mean, <laughs> I really do. I'm not trying to do that. But we will start over right here. Welcome, geeks and gamers, to Horseplay Live. This is May 1st, 2014. This is episode 20, May Mother Flowers. Hashtag Retro Friday. And once again, I'm joined by my partner in crime, Yogi Zilla. What's going on, big man? Hootie Hoot. Hootie Hoot. I'm constantly. I had a really energetic uh, thing, but then my eardrums got blown out, and I was like, I, I can't. I can't do anything. <laughs> Dude, I'm so sorry. I thought it was the same as last week. We're still trying to get Chipzilla in the call, actually. So, um, just. Uh, did you just call him Chipzilla? I did say Chipzilla because he's your boy, he's... man. It's like you guys are one <laughs> sometimes. I did say Chipzilla, not on purpose. He's part, you... he's part of the, the Zilla unofficial uh group yeah he is he is he is part of the unofficial he is part of the official group you know of the of the allgames.com is where we're at of course chips chip sella is from b team podcasts and agents of shield podcast um he's uh his twitter handle of course is at captain chaos and uh there he goes again i want to see what kind of what's going on with him Computer has been locking up, giving him some food bar. So, but we are gonna get him in the show when we when we can get him in. Of course, I got my pings rolling like crazy. Um, well, let's keep it moving. Yeah, we'll keep it moving because he's having keep some issues on, there. Dude. All right, so uh, I guess we should. So he's gonna be here any second. You want to just jump straight to the news this time? Yeah, we can just go right to the news and and get so some hopefully, of that yeah. stuff done, and then we can have some more talk time with him. 
Definitely. Yeah, but uh, quick, quick plugs. You know, make sure you do catch us on uh, allgames.com where we have what I've been cl- calling tentatively horseplay replay because it's a tongue twister. <laughs> and that's at five around 5 p.m. Eastern on allgames.com. Our, you can catch our previous week's episode. We have an archive there and a blog, so check that out. And, of course, our main HQ, our main hub, geekyantics.net. And, uh, of course, we get the voicemail line, 206-415-4987, if you want to join a conversation and uh, be part of the, the geeky antics. I mean, that's really what it is, shenanigans and silliness. Uh, you can also email us, if you're, if you're not much of a voice person, maybe you're shy, email us at uh, geekyantics at gmail.com. And we got a bunch of other things coming up, uh, including the new Twitch channel, might do the YouTube, uh, though I'm kind of hesitant about YouTube because they got a lot of crap going on, but... Uh, yeah, we got we got some stuff setting up, and you know, just gonna say it real quick. Uh, we were just on the Gaming Death podcast, who's now uh, part of the Geeky Antics Network, and they're they're officially our pre-show at 9 p.m. And they've been doing this for a long time uh, as the gaming podcast, like four years. So we're happy to have them. Definitely. Uh, and uh, you can catch them at GamingDeath.com. And uh, yeah, I think it covers all the bases. You can see their feed. And the, all the pertinent links over at geekyantics.net. And uh, so, so tonight on the show, we're going to cont- continue the Retro Friday, hashtag Retro Friday series. To kind of just get back to the basics. And, you know, the days when games were fun, had a lot of replay value. And uh, we weren't quite as jaded or cynical. Uh, and, and, and again, I say, remember, keep an open mind. Retro gaming, even simple games or indie games, they're not just for hipsters, you know, and people that just like pixel art. You know, it's it's about returning to the core, the true essence of gaming. You know, having fun. Right. Uh, and we'll be talking Marvel hu- Puzzle Quest. I was going to say Puzzle Quest. Marvel Puzzle Quest. Yeah, it's a new game. Marvel Puzzle Quest and uh, Hearthstone. Uh, as soon as Chips joins us, we'll be doing getting deep into that as part of the future discussion. But uh, on to the news. You want to share some of the news that we have uh, today? Or you want me to take this, Obi? Yeah, go oh, ahead. There we go. Get, oh, hey, uh... hey, hey. Did you see? Oh, he's here. <laughs> Shit, sorry Finally. guys, everything locked up. And and for those that are actually watching live, I I'm sorry guys, we're we're getting everything cameras up, but we're he actually is here, so we're actually to start this. Yogi, if you want to keep uh, just talk to Chip a little bit, um, and uh, I will get everything set up so we can actually get this going and get it going right. How's that? So yeah, uh, Chip, we came just in time. We we're just gonna blaze through news real quick so we get into the hot and heavy of the evening, the main event of the evening. But, uh, Hopefully we get a bunch of uh, the uh, B-Team Alliance joining us. That'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be cool. We, we're set up for call-ins. And by the way, that Skype account is uh, Horseplay. If you just add that, you can call in. Just give us a heads up and we'll add you to the call. But right now, the obligatory news. And Obi's uh, tinkering there. So just some real quick, some quick items this uh, week. We're going to switch things up a little bit tonight. Um, an ARS... Uh, technical study reveals that some very interesting stats about uh, Steam game usage. And a lot of this stuff is stuff that we kind of assumed, like, you know, people buy games and don't ever play them. So now we have some hard numbers to back that up. And I could tell you, a lot of us uh, in our community are still recovering from the Steam winter sale. <laughs> we have a massive backlog of games, and they're still doing sales. That would be Yogi, everybody. Hey, there's, I'm not the only one. It's a lot of us. I want to try to hide the fact that I, mean, I am one of them. I am. You're the main one. <laughs> but but I've actually been genuinely playing each of those games, recording gameplay videos, streaming them, and enjoying every one of them. It's just so it's actually a case where there's not a lot of crap. It's just a lot of good games and I don't know which one, where to start. Like really, it's it's crazy. So here, here's some quick stats for people to like numbers. And uh, um, Chip, have you heard any any of this? What's that? Uh str- people w- watching the streams and all that? No, the the Steam uh, usage data. That, oh, uh, ARS okay. Data. I thought you said streaming. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, Steam, Steam. You know, Vo- the Valve thing, the the PC Master Race thing. <laughs> yeah, you know my uh, take on that. I know, I know. But uh, some interesting stuff. So here we go. Uh, so these are some some of the key takeaways that I noticed. It's a very rich, long study there's a lot of stuff in there but this is what i pulled away from it so 37 percent of the 781 plus million so over 700 781 million games on steam libraries worldwide wow. have not been launched 
even once. 37% of those games, they've been purchased and never even touched. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can I we fall can make, in there. We can make more jokes about that now. <laughs> um, so 3.8 billion hours have been played on Dota 2 and counting. Now that should be no surprise because that's the game that everybody on Steam gets for free. And it's also, uh, you know, League of Legends right now is the most played game online, but Dota 2 is not far behind it. So pretty interesting no stuff. thanks to War- Chris. Warcraft. <laughs> Oh, 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 thanks to him. What? What did he have to do with no, it? No thanks to Chris, because he doesn't even know what League of Legends is. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're talking about Chris Gannon over at uh, Gaming Death uh, Podcast. We were just on there. You can check check them out again. We had some we had some fun. Though. Oh, we joined the last leg of it. He yeah. missed most of the freaking train wreck. <laughs> it was great. It was a good show. It was a really good show. We had some good good discussions. But um, another, here's another fun fact. 600% more time has been put into Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer as opposed to the campaign, or, you know, single player experience. 600% more. Or six times more, if you prefer, if you don't like percentages. That's pretty crazy. That's, that's a pretty significant number. It's a lot. And it, and it shows that, it's, that there's less and less, to me, there's less and less people that actually care about single player stories. I know, I know Chip, you like single player in games, right? Yeah, I'm not much of a multiplayer game. Every once, it depends on the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, I was, well, I have a puzzle quest. You, you like the multiplayer there. <laughs> you, you know, uh, being running this alliance is becoming a full time job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to talk about that because there's a yeah. thing that happens with uh, multiplayer games where you, there's a thin line between being active in it and enjoying it and then being active in it mm-hmm. and it becomes a job and then you lose the enjoyment. And I think that's a trap that a lot of us gamers fall into. We like OD on games and then we lose the love for it. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're so jaded. <laughs> jaded. Oh, sorry. I knew I was waiting for it. I, was, I knew something was going to say. <laughs> you burst out the song on podcast. That's good. <laughs> it's just a quick shout out again. Uh, the Twitch channel for Gaming Death is twitch.tv forward slash Gaming Death. All right, so make, give, give those guys some love. All right, so here's another stat about Steam. The top 10 most owned games, and this, again, should be no shocker, but we got hard data backing this up now. Dota 2, Team Fortress 2, Half-Life 2, The Lost Coast. I'm a little surprised about that one. Out of all the Half-Life games, that one, okay. And this is an order from the most owned to the least owned. Counter-Strike Source, um, Half-Life Deathmatch, Left 4 Dead 2, Counter-Strike... Half-Life 2, uh, Portal, and Counter-Strike Condition Zero. I don't think we have enough Counter-Strike there. There's quite a few Half-Lives in there, too. I mean, Yeah, yeah. Like and Half-Life and we're still- one, 1 through 20 and Deathmatch. <laughs> well, the funny thing is we're still waiting for freaking Half-Life 3, and I don't think it's anywhere near uh, Valve's like, priority list. No. Um, and, you know, this is interesting. Those are all Valve games. Now, if you go a little further in, deep in the list... Yeah, he's like, surprise. You know, if you go a little further, like to like deep top 20, there's some like Civ 5, I think, was in there, or Revolution. There's some non Valve games, but most of it's Valve. Um, so it's, it's kind of, eh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I won't, won't touch that right now, but Steam won't, still won't confirm or deny these stats. But it is worth noting that um, Steam Greenlight for now is still going strong. And, but they, it's true that they definitely are getting rid of it. They haven't rescinded their remarks on that. In fact, uh, Valve co-founder Gabe Newell said earlier in this year that, that he wants to make Greenlight go away. Exa- and he said he actually said he, go away because they are, quote-unquote, evolving. And I don't, I'm don't. i hoping it's because they're going to come up with something better, that it's less of a popularity contest and has not as much of a barrier to, of entry to, for, the, for the indie people and the smaller companies. Not that kind of barrier to entry. Sorry, dude. I, Come on. I, I never really understood Greenlight because it was almost like uh, Steam's version of American Idol, where, uh, you know, <laughs> vote on, you know, these are the game, vote on the games, and the one that gets the most votes, we're going to fund or something to that effect. And it just, it just never seemed. Right. I know. I, I mean, I'm. Not, you guys know me. I'm not a PC gamer, and it just I, something about it. 
you know, when we went to PAX last year, every indie that we spoke to, oh, we're on Steam Greenlight, go vote for us. That was the plug at every booth. Um, and I just never really understood what what it meant if you got green lit. They would let you put their your game on their system. Well, they would feature it. It'd be like one of the featured games. Like a lot of the things we see come up that are early access on uh, right now on Steam are things that were green lit, and and it gives them a lot more visibility. I think it's great. They do definitely need to remodel it, and a lot of people are saying a lot, a lot of sources I've talked with they're saying they're not going to get rid of it completely, even though that's what it sounded like. They're going to restructure it. But I love the model mm. of the user driven you know, vote with your wallet or vote with your influence kind of thing, like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and there's a whole bunch of the kind of things out there already. You know, it, it, the diff- only difference here is that people are, are not voting with their wallets, they're voting with their influence, with their friends, with their recommendations kind of thing. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's still a kind of currency, really. So there's no, I, don't, I don't see any difference mm-hmm. in it. The problem is that due to, you know, a lot of the gamers that have poor taste, they, they tend to go for, like, the shooters, <laughs> and then the games that are really unique and look like they actually would be fun and different and bring us something fresh, they don't get the attention they deserve because like, oh, look at that. that that's not like, uh, you know, that's not like H, ultra HD graphics, you know. It's freaking 16-bit scr- sprites or, it's, oh, it's 64-bit. Who still does 64-bit anymore? I mean, stupid stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but those are the guys and those are the gamers that actually are the the what's cool now kind of gamers. So those like... The people that got all the 2014 games for every system. Okay, those are the people that are... are I'm going to jump on this bandwagon right now. Okay? Um, because they're still... We'll get into this later. I'm not even going to go into it. I, I was getting ready to rant. I'm not going to do that. Not right now. We got news to get through. I can't do it yet. Hell, I have my time. We're, at, we're actually <laughs> almost done with the, the, the news, so we're doing pretty good. But um, if we if we have a chance, we'll free ball on it some more and, and mm-hmm. kind of talk about the current state of the gaming industry, which is a topic we always go back to. <laughs> I can see it in K- Captain Chaos's eyes. He wants to talk about this. Oh, I know. This hits home for all of us, whether you're a PC gamer or not, because it's just bad practices all over the place. But, you know, love it or hate it, the PC still is the most open, inviting, accessible platform for game developers. Uh, and I'll agree. Uh, go ahead. I'll go ahead, agree Jay. with you there, but uh, you know, you're talking about the state of gaming. Uh, the state of gaming is pretty freaking scary right now. I think. Um, <laughs> you know, we went to PAX, and we're gonna get into this. Later. Chris and I. All right, but Chris <laughs> and I were ready at eleven o'clock Friday morning, saying. What the hell are we going to do here for the next three days? Well, yeah, actually, we, we were going to talk about that uh, if you had uh, come here on time, Mr. Sella. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, hey, I, I, I got off one show. I I had to go to the bathroom, man. I really did. I had to, you know, get nick nated here, you know. I know, I know. We we, we understand. nick nated baby. But, but, yeah, it was interesting because we've had this conversation that, that PAX East yeah. – the tabletop games were more interesting, and there was more of them than there were video games. Period. Right? I could have done. I could have done a hell of a lot more tabletop videos than I would could have done um, video game interviews. And just because we are more a video game podcast than a tabletop, uh, I actually didn't do a few segments over at the tabletop. But yes, the tabletop was far more interesting this year than the video games. That's see, that's that's sad. Uh, but no, it's actually kind of cool. But yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say. Actually, it's cool because I love tabletop games, and um, it's funny. We we've come a long way. I, I hear from a lot of people that the online games have made it so that they connect with more people and make new friends. But now I I think we're also going backwards again to a point where it's sharding the community and people becoming more antisocial and they're hiding behind the the benefits of anonymity. Mm -hmm. So in tabletop, you just can't get around it. It's a social thing. Once in a while, it's not. Like when you go to a hobby shop and you run into the people playing D&D and you're like, hey, can I jump in this game? I got my character sheet. Hell no! (laughs) It's like, okay. And that's supposed to be a social thing, but whatever. 
Yeah, but like something like D and D is as social as who your group of friends you're playing with. Are. Yeah, and I get that, but I mean, come on, well, it's but any game, not as like if you see a card game being played, Magic the Gathering, and you say, "Oh, I have my deck," or you see a card game being played, and I can't remember for the life of me what the other ones are, uh, Yu Gi Oh or Pokemon or whatever they have nowadays. Um, but uh, I can't remember what the Dan game was. Well, maybe it was just Magic in in general, and you have your deck with you, but. They're all like, no, we have this. We're doing this, this, and this. You can't play with us because we don't even know you. You might have some freaking crazy cards and want to get money off us or something. But, see, I, th- I mean, and I'm not into the Magic or the D&D crowd um, to any extent. Yeah. Uh, th- they're a special breed, both of those. And th- they are games where maybe... Uh, you. You're you're going to play, especially D and D. You're going to play with your friends. You're, you know, you're in the middle of a dungeon and adventure, et cetera. Someone popping in probably doesn't uh, uh, is conducive to that type of game. Magic probably to the same extent, unless unless you're in some type of tournament. Uh, and you know where I go, where I play a lot of tabletop. Uh, they have a day and it's just everybody shows up and you just meet a lot of great people and get and hey you know we walked in the store a couple of weeks ago and uh, before we even got to the room I usually play in two guys go hey you want to jump in and play Sentinels of the Multiverse with us I looked at my nephew and I was like yeah let's do it and we played with those guys all afternoon so um, I th- you know tabletop I think is more social than magic or D and D is what I think I'm getting at here. And I think that's what Yogi was trying to get at too. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. No? Well, also there's, but, there's some really good like DMS that they could work, you know, extra different variables into their campaign. You know, like someone shows up last minute mm-hmm. or they have to leave. You work in it to the story, you know, that's part of the mm-hmm. fun is the narrative. Um, it's just funny, like with uh, tabletop in a way, it's, it's uh, making a strong comeback. Not, not that it ever went mm-hmm. away, but it's becoming a lot more pervasive. And I've seen like Steve Jackson games putting they're putting out more games, uh, Looney Labs, and there's a lot of new de- new publishers out there, new new developers, designers doing stuff that's really cool. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. But it's still funny that you catch the guys that are making it to a very exclusive experience rather than sharing it, because that kind of thing you want to share and make meet more people to do it, so you can do it more often. Because I mean, mm-hmm. I have tons. I have a whole closet full of board games and you know tabletop games of all sorts. And you know, I got the dungeon manuals of D and D and everything, the monster manuals, all that stuff. I got the calculators and the so- I even have software to help design campaigns. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to be really into it, but I don't really have that many people to do it. So I welcome anyone that just walks by, and say, "Hey, you're into that? Cool." It's like a badge of honor. Yep. People should be should embrace that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, you know, we'll have to have a tabletop episode at some point. That's a whole different oh, definitely. beast. But, uh, you but, know, the, the thing with Steam, with Valve, I think that they're uh, putting a little bit too much into the hopes of their Steam machines. And uh, and I, ho- I hope they do not they do right by us and they, they don't put all their eggs in one basket. It's cool that they're doing that. I'm actually one of the few people that is excited about what they could do with that, what it could be become. But I don't want it to do pursue Steam machines and Steam OS in lieu of you know, throwing everything else against the wall and taking the crap out of it or whatever. I don't like that part. And also, uh, Gaming Death in the chat says that he loved PAX this year. Uh, Chris Gannon again. He, he says that the indie scene was really great. And see, again, that kind of it's kind of goes in the same. It's ha- it goes hand in hand. Mm-hmm. The the indie the indie scene and the, and the tabletop scene is, is booming because I think gamers of all kinds as you know as a whole. We are just tired of the same regurgitated shit. We want something different to play. You know, if I see another shooter, as much as I love my tactical shooters, I'm going to gouge my eyes out. I mean... With a spoon. The, with a rusty spoon at that. It's just How come I'm not seeing the chat? I thought I'm in the right place. Yeah, it's uh, it's twitch.tv forward slash obi1x2. It's in the top oh, of the I channel, too. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 put the, I put the link in there, too. I simulcast it through there. 
Chip doesn't we yeah, all, Chip all... doesn't want to be with us guys. It hurts. <laughs> he wants to be on Yogi's channel. It's... I'm I'm sorry. Well, I do I do that so that anybody it. that hits the channel can come over there too, you know? Well, Yogi, <laughs> your your uh, your channel is not streaming dick. We is just it? Yeah, I'm the having a uh, Marvel puzzle quest thing. Oh yeah, it's audio only. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I don't do the video through there. So I just do the audio with a little overlay on it so that people will know they want that, that's for the mobile users. All right. So we got we got uh, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. But see, you got to be careful, Chip. You're breaking the fourth, for coming in late, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah. You're breaking the fourth wall here. I mean, we're, we're becoming there self-aware. We all right. <laughs> Captain Chaos. Now, Yogi has been on me and on me and on me for the last two to three weeks saying, dude, you need to try. You know what? We'll talk about this in a minute. I want it's about it's a it's about uh, the Marvel puzzle quest. I want to got some mm-hmm. questions for you, but yo, you can keep going. Sorry, I'm, oh, yeah, I'm well, derailing the, the... this show too. Come on, don't you know? <laughs> we're keeping we're keeping the spirit going from our last thing tonight, <laughs> gaming death. <laughs> so yeah, no, uh, so anyway, moving on. Uh, so Microsoft and the world of Microsoft, the uh, Xbox Originals channel is coming out, and they I was surprised that they had so many things lined up already, so many uh, shows. And uh, partners lined up for it. And actually, at first, I thought this was a huge joke. Mm-hmm. But they have some pretty good programming. And I'm kind of hopeful about it. Uh, not just because I'm a little bit of an Xbox fanboy when it comes to the, uh, choosing the console. But the fact that, you know, one of my favorite channels used to be Sci-Fi. And they've gone down to complete, you know, you know what. I mean, oh, Sci-Fi doesn't even. Yeah, they don't even they don't even play science fiction anymore, mm-hmm. and that that name change. Ever since they changed the, this, they changed their name. It's like they went into full retard mode. And I'm mean, sorry Cifi? to say, that. yeah, Sifi. <laughs> when they became Sifi, yeah, it's terrible. Uh, but uh, you know, they, they, Spielberg is supposedly producing the Halo TV series. I was like, damn, that's kind of a big player to be doing that. Uh, so I'm a little intrigued. What, what do you guys think about this? I can't wait. Um, I'm not really a Halo kind of guy, and we're talking about the Halo, the game, right? With the space shooting the big plasma guns and all that stuff, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just I don't, you know, there's a couple Halos. Uh, I'm not really a Halo guy, but the sense of it could being like a series or something, I would actually really, really want to get into it. And make sure I watch it every week. I mean, that's just me, but I'm a, I'm a retard sometimes too. But, you know, I. I just never got into the Halo mythology or universe, so I don't know. That's it. I, I'm in the same boat. I, I enjoy playing Halo, but it's not like I'm so into the mythos that I need more Halo content. Like I've watched um, some of the stuff they have, like on Netflix, the CG movies and stuff, and Red versus Blue is, is entertaining, though that's not officially a Microsoft thing. But uh, I'm not like one of those people. Like the thing, it's funny. As much as I love the original Xbox, and I and I've been on Xbox Live since the, pretty much the very beginning, I wasn't one of those people that thought Halo was revolutionary. Because as a PC gamer, I I played that game a long time ago. It was called Tribes. It was called Doom. <laughs> you know, but they made it seem like this is brand new. Oh my gosh, you, you got guns and you space marines and, and you can ride vehicles. This, who thought about this? How did they come up with this? Did they just sleep and have a dream? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, 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 that game's come out several times on the PC. Just, just, just so you know. I'm not trying to be a snob about it, but it's, I, I, it's like when people... You ever hear a song that's playing on the radio and people are like, oh, I love that song. That's the best song they came out with. Like, well, that's a cover of a song by so-and-so. And it's so frustrating that people are like, I can't, that's, that, that, he's such a good songwriter. They wrote this song, and look at that beat they made. That entire song is a cover. None of that is there. The only thing that's there is their voice. And the, the obsolete beat that they made that goes like one step faster or one step slower. <laughs> For, it, it, it frustrates me, man. I think Chip was going to say something, too. I think it, it grinds his gears as well. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, um, I, I, think the, I think what Halo did was it was the best first-person shooter for a console at the time. Um, you know, we've, we had them before, but this is the first time where uh, the controls felt right. And... Um, 
the game was just a you know a quality first person shooter. Um, so yes, like you said, it's been on Tribes was on PC before, but this is the first time that they actually were able to bring it to your TV. Yeah, and and I, and I get that. Uh, I mean, that's, that's the argument about consoles altogether is that they have a, it's more uniform experience, it's more convenient, you know. Um, and and of course, it's the out of box experience. You don't have to deal with drivers and getting every all your settings optimized and you know patching things mm-hmm. up. You know, it, it's a very convenient and um, less intimidating experience. And as much as I love the PC. I don't recommend it for everyone. You need to be a specific kind of person. As far as variety, PC is great. But, uh, you know, the community sometimes can be caustic and elitist. And you got to be a little technically savvy or not be intimidated by things like things crashing or sputtering down because you're running too many things in the background. I think you can do it. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of variables. You can't be like me. There, that's it. That's, that's <laughs> well, the best that's... way I can explain it. That's why I can't stand PC gaming is dealing with settings and, uh, you know, I want to be able to pop the game into my uh, system and it plays. No bullshit. Not tweaking See, settings, I'm... not. And it's one of the reasons why I avoid PC gaming like the play. <laughs> he made my heart Well, hurt. that and uh, that and using uh, keyboard and mouse. I know a lot of people are not keen on that. See, oh, no. They've Steam already has answers for that because they have big picture mode, which no one really mm. seems to really use. And you could you could you could play Steam games on your TV right now mm-hmm. and get that console effect. And most of the games do come with controller support. And if they don't have native controller support, you could use the macro function on your on your gamepad to program the keys and, and make it do what you want it to do. So but again. It's not as as convenient and as fun as an out of box experience. You have to kind of get it where you want it to first, and then you can really enjoy it. So I totally get that, and hopefully, you know, to me, the, the what Valve should be saying with you know, I don't want to go back to this again, but I think what Valve should be saying with Steam Machine is their their promise should be, hey, we're gonna make PC less of an asshole for you, so you can enjoy your games. That that, that should be their, their value proposition. I think that, that that would resonate more with people than uh, bringing PC game into the living room. I mean, that's that's value added, but I think that should be the promise. Hey, we're going to make PC gaming less of an asshole. <laughs> yay, nay, yay or nay, no? Yay. Yes. Never going to happen because the problem... <laughs> well, I mean, the beauty of uh, the console is it's, it's a set of... Uh, set of components you know it's a fixed set of components everybody has the same processor graphics card you know yada yada same amount of ram blah 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 so uh you can have the you can optimize the game for this fixed set of settings that's not the way it is with pc games because there's always new graphics cards everybody has you know water cooled fans and this and that and overclock this and whatever and you know, you have a well, you know, there is no uh, consistent set of components in everybody's uh, system. Right. Well, and that's what makes I think what that's what makes PC gaming somewhat fun, because um, it makes you makes the people that want to do it actually spend the money to actually get those decent video cards. I'm not saying the best of the best. But the decent video cards, the decent processors, the decent computer as a whole. Um, yes, do I have some pretty elaborate stuff for my gaming stuff? For what games I play? Yeah, very much so. Uh, the average person wouldn't get what I have. But does that make it fun? Definitely. Does it make it to where you know where... If, you're, uh, if you play World of Warcraft and you're a huge PvPer... Okay, and you play with a multi-button like a Razer Naga or, or a, a, a G3 630 or whatever for Logitech. If you play with those, you have all those buttons at your fingertips. Well, then you can actually identify when you when you see somebody that doesn't use a multi-button mouse. Uh, and the, the, the earliest detection is basically backpedaling. You know, that's, we just don't do that because we strafe and we move with our mouse. 
You know, just those little advantages are what make people good at the games that they're playing. Oh, and, of course, skill. I mean, if you don't have skill, then you're stuck. <laughs> but, you know, if you guys know what I mean, yeah. it's not something that, you know, I can sit there and play League of Legends all day, have all the best of the stuff, but if I suck in lane phase, I'm not going to get to mid-game and late-game. I mean, that's, you know, that's just an instance, but you guys know what I mean? I, yeah, I get the concept. I mean, I've never tried League of Legends, but well, well, I'm just not not as a whole. I mean, if, even if you played any game, um, and mm -hmm. and you have a say uh, a mouse that has a little bit better, um, what is it? DPI is what it's called. The <clears throat> yeah. it, it responds faster, yeah. or uh, you have a you play a game that you need if you have a multi button mouse such as a Razer Naga. Uh, and you have those 12 extra buttons at your thumb, would that give you an advantage for whatever game you want to play that needs multi, uh, you know, a multitude of buttons? Is what I was asking. I mean, it's not just League of Legends it's in general, but just any game. Right. Hmm? Well, I, and I, if you ever saw my lack of skill with WASD, you would understand that. <laughs> and, uh, forget it. Uh, when we were at PAX, uh, I was playing the new Orcs Must Die, and oh. it was set up on PC. I didn't want to play it, and they made me play it. And after one round, the guy realized, okay, I'll take over and play for you because I am, you know, I just can't do it. I'm, well, it you know, I've never sat down to spend time to, you know, I'm still a hunt and pecker uh, typer, so... Right. It was like, no, until you have it on a joystick, I don't even want to touch this. And, and I know you want to say something, Yogi, I know, because we've been cutting you off the whole time. But to those, to that right there, there are some people where they are better console players. There are some people where they mm -hmm. are better strategy players. Like, I'm going to give you an instance, and then Yogi, by all means, take it away. My wife, okay, I got her into playing Hearthstone, okay? I love her to death with all my heart. I would die for her, this woman, but I will never, ever play her stone with her again competitively. <laughs> okay, saying, you know, this is, we're having, we have our three games a week. Those videos are coming out, but it's getting kind of boring when I'm losing three in a row. You know, but it's just. She's kicking your ass in Hearthstone? Yes, because, now, listen, I am a person that thinks just like I am thinking, like I'm sitting. I see the cards, this is what I think. I don't think about that this plus three shaman card that costs one mana crystal. I can put that on this guy that's a 7-7 seven, seven plus one to everybody. I can give him attack three, and that gives him ten, but I don't think like that. She does. She thinks well in advance. She beats my ass in chess, too. I don't like it. That's why I don't play her in chess anymore. But that's just... That's why she's a wife. They're evil and... Yeah, yeah, well... Definitely. Evil masterminds. But if you were to ask her to say, hey, <laughs> hey, Missy, go ahead and go try... Um, no, I'll just say, say it. League of Legends or Arma 2. She's going to go, huh? Just because she has no <laughs> desire to play those games. These A strategy game for her is the most gratifying time to where she can just sit and think about how to deviously destroy somebody from the inside out. And it happens to be on her stone. Now, <laughs> will I make sure she tries the Marvel Puzzle Quest and all that good stuff? I will definitely do that. And I will do that for you, Captain. Right for you. She'll like okay. Marvel Puzzle Quest. She's going to like Marvel Puzzle Quest. If, if she likes that abomination called Candy Crush, Marvel Puzzle Quest is oh. like a billion times better. Oh it actually God. has strategy, right? You know, match like I I usually think match three games are uninspired, but Marvel Puzzle Quest, and again we're gonna get into that. And how much is it? It's actually got some depth to it. It's free. It's free game. Oh man! If you play it free a certain game. way, if you play it a certain way, it's like Hearthstone. <laughs> and, and we're we're we will definitely get into how to avoid paying for Marvel Puzzle Quest because because it is probably one of the lowest paywalls in any of these games when you say yogi yeah absolutely because up up until um i started funding the alliance in the four or five months i played i had only spent 15 dollars yep and i really didn't even have to spend that if i uh didn't want to and wanted to support the game you know at least give them a tip from time to time mm -hmm. 
now that now that we have the alliance i've probably dropped 80 bucks buying uh, <laughs> all our spots or almost all our spots um yeah. we do, the two other commanders have uh contributed as well yeah so, yeah. so i'm actually getting this yeah. game to join you is that what this is hmm? so i'm actually getting in this game to join you <laughs> Correct? Uh, no, we're not accepting any noobs right now. <laughs> but you can join us indirectly by becoming our Facebook friends and sending yes, us gifts. We, 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 will, we will support you on Facebook, but uh, the, we're, we're having a, a few issues with the alliance where the veteran players are a little frustrated with the noobs right now. So um, Yeah, we're going to get into that. But I, I, I know I know they're lighting a fire under your ass because you're like mm. busting our chops hardcore. And I'm I'm not a slacker. I just don't grind as hard as some of these guys where they're hitting top ten and twenty. To do that is just too much of a time commitment for me. But we'll get into that. <laughs> Once in a while I do pull out top twenty though. Not all the time. It's FYI. Don't kick me, don't kick me. <laughs> So anyway, closing out the news, we were talking about Halo and uh, Martin, Martin O'Donnell, uh, who uh, you may know, he's one of those behind-the-scenes guys in the gaming industry who uh, does music. Uh, his, mm-hmm. You may recognize his work. He's done the work on uh, Halo series, uh, on the new Destiny that's coming out, Oni, Riven, and Myst. So taking it back there, Riven and Myst. PC gaming, there you go. Though it's been on other platforms since then, but yeah, seeing it back... Uh, Martin O'Donnell actually got fired without cause, as he says, by uh, the uh, Bungie uh, board of directors. Very interesting. Uh, no, no explanation and no comment from them. But uh, moving on from that, I, I do want to share a fun fact uh, about um, how Bun- uh, how um, the Riven developers used to spend their free time. They used to play a called Methon. While they were developing uh, Riven and Mist and all that stuff, and and Marathon is like the roots. Well, actually, Riven Mist was much earlier. Um, uh, what you call it? They this is Marathon. Actually, the game that kind of inspired Halo. So it's the precursor what, to Halo. Yeah, exactly. So and it's actually one of the few games on on an Apple platform. <laughs> much earlier. That, that's probably worth uh, saying. Uh, but well, uh, originally, Halo was going to be an Apple exclusive. Kind of yeah, can you Is imagine that- what it would have been? <laughs> that would have been very weird to to me, at least. But uh, eh. hey, Steam works on that on uh, Mac, and so does Hearthstone. Just just throwing it out there. Yeah. Um. Another thing that's neat about um, Martin O'Donnell's story is that the way he started working at Bungie was because he enjoyed this game marathon. They were just playing during their downtime while working on Riven, and he just emailed a Bungie employee. And then he got hired. It's kind of neat. You know, that kind of stuff doesn't happen these days that much. But, you know, it's kind of cool to think about it. And they, on. they didn't give oh, a the, reason as to why. He just, they just stopped. I, I mean, Marty O'Donnell has been with Halo or with Bungie forever. Yeah, and I could not find anything. None of my PR contacts had anything. I mean, all the usual sources, I couldn't find anything. I mean, I probably could have stand to dig a little deeper. But no one knew anything other than he just tweeted out, I was fired without cause. He tweeted it out, and that's it. It's very strange. I had a chance to interview him a few years ago, and uh, my nephew was being a pain in the ass, and we had to leave. Oh, he your, your cameraman. It. Yes. An asshole cameraman. I took him to uh, <laughs> the video game orchestra, yeah. and oh, I had nice. spent the entire... I had spent the entire weekend hanging out with Tommy Tallarico and uh, Lauren Lanning. I went and had pizza with Lauren Lanning. Um, And we had a chance to interview Marty O'Donnell. But he was young. The music didn't interest him. uh, You know, the concert wasn't all that interesting to him. And afterwards, he faked an illness, and I had to bring him home. Oh, God. Yeah, that's terrible. So. I, from what I understand, Marty's a pretty, you know, down to earth mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, it's kind of a shame to hear this kind of thing because even though I'm not that big on on Halo as a game, and I I enjoy playing, it, but it's not like you know the best thing to, to slice bread. 
but I do enjoy the music. The music I find is kind of like, I don't know. It, it usually puts chills through me. And, mm -hmm. it, and it creates that feeling of, wow, this is an epic thing, or at least it's supposed to be. <laughs> well, did, um, have you ever, have you gone to a VG, uh, video game orchestra concert? I've heard them. Uh, okay. Uh, through, uh, yeah. If, memes. <laughs> if you get it, if you get a chance, and, you know, this is weird. I, I guess I should put the Skype window on my main screen here. It's, there we go. Because <laughs> all I'm doing is looking to the side the entire time. Um, yeah, well, we, if, what I do is I put the, the, the your picture, your video, right under where the camera yeah. is at. So it looks like I'm looking at you. It helps out. Pro tip for everybody out there. <laughs> so, um, but uh, if you ever get a ch if they're ever in the area and if you contact their PR people, you with your show and everything, you should probably get in there. Go and check it out. It's a lot of fun because not only do you have the music from, you know, Final Fantasy and Halo and Super Mario, uh, but you have lasers, you have video playing in the background, you have special effects going off. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a fun night just uh, uh, of music. So, and uh, usually they do a lot of like, additional events surrounding the thing like uh when i saw it it was at yale and they had a couple of symposiums and uh that i was able to go to and uh you know listen to tommy and lauren and a couple other people talk about gaming and what they expected gaming to be in the future which and it was just you know it was a great time so you, yeah, you get a chance definitely check it out that's a good and recommendation. They're usually reasonable. Yeah. Well, yeah, I definitely would recommend that. From what I've seen, definitely is my kind of thing. I mean, I, I like sometimes I enjoy just downloading uh, OSTs for like video games and stuff or mm -hmm. reimaginings of the song. As a matter of fact, on Geek and, on Geek and Sundry over at YouTube, name drop, <laughs> shout out Fel Fel Felicia Day and Will Whedon. But <laughs> um, they have a, a, this one channel, this one show where they, they do reinterpretations of. Uh, Different things uh, from like 8 bit games and 16 bit games. And this girl uses uh, an electric guitar, uh, not guitar, electric violin. With a violin, yep. It's pretty crazy. I mean, they use all the, they have all the synth stuff and going on. It's crazy. They, they, they do a really good job. And I, every time I, I, I listen to the, the their, um, you know, like kind of like reimaginings of the songs, I, I get chills through that too. Like, and I, get, I get all nostalgic and I'm like, damn, I'm old. <laughs> well, Microsoft actually brought her out on stage at an E3, probably for Halo 3, if I'm remembering right. And they had her uh, doing like the Halo theme song on the electric violin, and it was yeah, yeah. pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, she's good. She's good. Yeah. She freaking rips on that thing like it's, like it's an electric guitar. <laughs> so anyway, we're almost done here with the news. Uh, we, we, last week we reported on episode 19, that uh, Hearthstone's doing these fireside gatherings. And uh, Stan our own Stan Farina reported that they they've been mostly a flop. This They were supposed to do these for an extended period. Hopefully they do. But basically the idea is that anyone can host a meetup, and Blizzard will list the location of the meetup, and people can bring out their iPads, or if they want their computers, if they can actually get hookups. And then uh, play Hearthstone together and use the player near near me option to play with people in the area. And then if you do three matches like that, if you play with three people on your subnet, basically the same wireless network or the same LAN, then you get a uh, limited edition card back, kind of like you do when you play ranked play. So it's kind of neat. I hope they keep that up because it's a good viral agent. Obi, what, what, what you got on that? I got one. I have people come What's over to my house all the time and play Hearthstone on my network. Yeah. Well, dude, if you do three people at the same time, uh, yeah, I you got should one do more it. Coming over, I got one more coming over tomorrow. We're actually gonna do it. We're gonna play some Hearthstone. So, yeah, so I'll you get, you get know, contact we'll, Blizzard. We'll uh, we'll try to put it on uh, stream too. Maybe we'll we'll see. Maybe get dude, you, you gotta make an event out of this. Definitely, we'll, I'll man. pimp the hell out of it, and I know everybody else will, because uh, Blizzard puts you on on their directory, and, and you can call it Casa Obi if you want. You know. They don't care, and then they put it on there to see the time and location. Dude, exactly. You see what I'm going with this? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm I, gonna tell you what I'm. How did this not? <laughs> yeah, 
But it's kind of cool, though, because, I, I mean, I know that, that they could probably stand to give people more support and help with the whole thing and organizing it. But, you know, they already give you, like, some like a little cheat sheet, like a little handbook on how to set up your, your meetups. And some people say, oh, well, it's kind of lame that these companies are using the, you know, consumer to market their stuff. Well, that's what everyone's doing, so what can you do? That's what Facebook is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what Twitter, that's what Facebook. I mean, you know, I do the album of the day. Exactly. You know, things You're not like that. that. We share no. things that we love. You know, we share things yeah. that we love. And there's a, it's a mutual benefit because you get to meet like-minded people that way. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I enjoy your album of the day. I don't always get to comment on it, but I check it out. And sometimes I stop and, and, and look at it briefly. And I'm like, oh, I love that album. And sometimes I look and I'm like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> Oh, you'll find out that I'm a big uh, blues fan very quickly. See, I like all kind of music. Yeah. We, talk, we could talk about this. See, we have very yeah. eclectic case. But, uh, so yeah, big, quick shout-outs to everybody that's in the chat. We're going to try to keep things moving along. We do have a lot to cover. Um, and we're gonna, again, again, we're going to talk about Marvel Puzzle Quest and uh, ask Chip how he's become such a ninja in the game without uh, getting a heart attack. <laughs> And Obi's going to yeah. beg him to join him every second of every chance I can on this show. Exactly. And and, and then Obi and I will talk about Hearthstone, something we're a little yep. more well-versed in. Chip, please. And, Chip. yeah, you, got, you guys can help me with that because I'm failing miserably at Hearthstone, but I think I've come to a couple of conclusions. We, we talked Hearthstone for probably <laughs> 20 minutes on our show tonight as well. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't train noobs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, oh at, no, don't feed the trolls. Hey, oh. noob, noob, at, hey at Chip, 20, I'll make 20 you a deal. Bucks. I'll make you a deal. Noob for a noob, man. I'll help you because right. if you take me on, take me under your wing. I won't be a noob, dude. I'll listen I, to what I, you say. I will help you as much as I can. I ha Unfortunately, first of all, it's $20 per alliance slot right now for me to add somebody. And, uh, but I. I will gift you. I will help you with your roster, and uh, I will add you as soon as I th you get a decent roster together. That fair? Sounds good. All and right. So then the I only will reason help you. is we have we have a lot of people in this alliance. Uh, I I mean I'm I'm in it because I enjoy it, but. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people that are starting to get a little uh, frustrated that we're not breaking the top 50 uh, in the tournaments. And it, and I did a quick analysis of uh, our members the uh, la last night. You saw that, Yogi, right? Yep. Where uh, the, top, the, the top performers are uh, averaging somewhere around 1,000 to 1,500 points per alliance member and we're at 500 and there's yeah. a bunch of people that are you know busting their ass in our alliance that are getting 900 and getting a little frustrated that some people aren't pulling their weight and it's like it's not that type of alliance we want to yeah, do yeah. well but <laughs> and so right now i have to you know as the captain I got to quell the mutiny and then yep. I can bring in some more. Uh, okay. That's more been moves. there. I accept that. Been th now been there, of... done that. Obi, Obi knows what's up too. Cause mm -hmm. uh, we both have been involved in many in gaming clans and have ran gaming clans. And I have one that I've been running that is more of a social group than anything else since like the nineties. So we, we still have the same core group. Yep. Same group, core group of people. That we just get together for local mm -hmm. meetups, for tabletop stuff, or we get together on Xbox or PC, whatever. And, you know, we're just very casual. It's kind of, you have to find a sweet spot where you're competitive, yeah. but not to the point where it becomes a lifestyle. Because I don't know about you guys, but I can't commit to one single game 24-7. That's not my definition of fun. That's not like an MMO to me. I'm different. Mm -hmm. See, I can. But on the other hand, yeah, I've played WoW for how many years, um, you know. But uh, Chip, that's, what that's I why tell you go you, dark so long. <laughs> yeah, I did go dark. That's why everybody's asking me, am I going to play the next expansion? Nope. 
Anyway, Chip, instead of me training you on Hearthstone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a couple games, give you my wife's name on, on Battle, and let her teach you how to play Hearthstone. I guarantee you'll be beating my ass in a week. <laughs> Deal? We could we and can I, work on that, yeah. And, and I'll bust my butt with the Marvel, uh, the Mar and she'll probably be playing that too. And she'll probably you'll want her on your team. I'm guaranteeing you. <coughs> um, but we'll 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 it's an even trade off, I think. Yeah. Before and I, I one of the things I want to do tonight is give tips for noobs, because there are some pitfalls if you fall into, that you can fall into very quickly that will cost you um, down the road. Mm -hmm. Well, before we Definitely. before we forget, we do see lots and tons of sharing and lurking on Geeky Antics content. What we want to do is we want to say we appreciate everybody's support. We really thank you a lot with what we're trying to do, um, and now acquiring Death Gaming Podcast, and just it just we're we're doing it, guys. So we really want to appreciate, and we want to show, we want to express the that we love you guys very much, and we really appreciate it. So you know. I know that's, I don't know if Yogi wanted to say that or whatever he wanted to do, but I'm sure he'll take this next one, though. You ready for it? What, will I? Yeah. <clears throat> you ready for it? Go ahead. Ah! Go ahead. Quickie. The real next gen. What is it, Yogi? This is <laughs> why, before we go into the main event, I just want to share a quick kind of rant and see where you guys are at with this, and encourage some uh, feedback from the community. Whoever, where, wherever you listen to us, whether it's on All Games or Geeky Antics, Stitcher, Zoom, iTunes, wherever, we, we're, we encourage you to call in and, and, and comment on any of the things that we discuss and, and keep the conversation going. That number is 206-415-4987. But the real next gen, and it's a question mark, because... You know, I have a lot of mixed feelings here, and I know I'm not the only one because I've heard Chip's show and, you know, on the B-Team podcast, you hear Next Gen thrown around a lot. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's it's a hot button topic because the root issue here is about our expectations as gamers, right? Now, I've got lots of crap about not having, uh, not playing a lot of Next Gen games and not only a Next Gen console, and I, and I tell people, and I, and I don't want to be an elitist, but I'm like, I got one already. It's called the, my PC. Because I'm playing newer stuff and more fun stuff right now on the PC than I, I see on the Xbox One or the PS4. And that's just me. Nothing on the consoles right now is is going to make me pull the trigger. The only thing that I feel bad about is that I don't get to play games online with my friends when they set up Titanfall matches and you know and whatnot. But You're not I missing mean, much on Titanfall. Yeah, I know, I know, and I, I mean, I've played it and, and it's cool, but I think, like a lot of things on the console, it's a flavor of the moment. It's like it's good because right now it's the only, it's the it's the coke in the desert, you know. It's the only, thirsty. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the only. It's thing. the only thing on there right now. Yeah, but you, tell me, you know, what do you guys think? Do you think we're expecting too much from the next gen, or maybe, or maybe we're just too jaded? I'm gonna let Chip go first because. Uh... Right back. All right. Yeah, Chip, you go His first. His turn to choke. No. <laughs> um, well, you know, I was against uh, this generation coming out when it did as it was because I was still per perfectly happy with my uh, 360 and my PS3. I mean, you look at yep. games like Bioshock Infinite. You look at games like uh, The Last of Us. You know, those were absolutely spectacular games that showed there was still a lot uh, left in the tank. You might be near the top of the tank, but, uh, you know, there was still something left. And, you know, so far, and you, you know we've talked about it on our show, it's like, look, we were promised flying cars. I don't see them yet. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so far I think the new generation ha uh, is an empty promise. But it yeah. was like, well, what were you expecting and, you know, what did they promise us? And the only thing I saw, was, I remember, you know, I pre-ordered both the PS3 and the Xbox One uh, as soon as they went live on Amazon after the their respective uh, press conferences just to say, all right, I have my place in line. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I have them both and I just, it's just like me, I know, uh, do the games look better? Yeah, of course they look better. Do they play any better? Well, the few games that are actually out for these systems? No, not really. I mean, a first person shooter is a first person shooter. Yep. You've had some bells and whistles. Um, see, that's the, you know, that's the thing. I just feel yeah. like, like, you know, before it used to be a big thing when we took the leap from 4-bit to 8-bit to 16-bit to 32-bit. Yep. Not so much because the graphics were better, but it was a significant change in, in the um, amount of possibilities that opened up mm-hmm. for the developer. Their, their creativity was no longer limited. But that, that's that been the case, like, I would say for since for like two generations already. The, the people have a lot of power to take advantage of for a long time already. Or at least with the 360 and PS3, they've had that power. They just haven't done anything fresh with it. You know, and some people say, well, when you ask for new ideas and it comes out, it tanks. Well, that's because they're, they're, they're not handling it the right way, you know? They make all this hoopla about these uh, regurgitated games, but then the things that really need our attention get no kind of mention. There's no viral campaign or nothing, and they just kind of go under the radar, right? What do you think, Chip? Um, <clears throat> I'm collecting my rewards for the simulator. Um, well, so I got in your head, so I figured you had a lot of stuff to say well, on that. No, I'm, and, I, I, and I'm agreeing with you because... Uh, well, I think there's, you know, a okay. It takes a little while to get your head around the hardware and learn how to to make this new instrument play music, and you know, so you know, being an early adopter uh, for every generation of console, um, I'm kind of used to this. It's going to take a year before people get their sea legs and are able to do something with these things. Um, but at the same time, where do we go? And when you do something innovative, uh, people people respond negatively most of the time. It's not what they're used to. So unless it's something mind-blowing and you can get the hype train behind it, uh, it's going to be... Uh, lost in a sea of Call of Duty clones. <laughs> That's definitely very accurate. And I love what you said about the games are not playing any differently. I think that's a big thing. The core mechanics have not been mm-hmm. changed. The the even little features they could do to enhance the online experience on the console. The simple things that people that are not even game designers see as an opportunity. They're not doing these things. Um it, it feels like for as much as they've brought on the online experience and game experiences to the masses, it, it still feels very sharded and kind of patchworked, right? There's so many things they can improve beyond just giving us a few extra polygons. And to me, I feel like the indie games, you know, not the big studio releases, they're the real, they're, the real, they're exemplifying a true next-gen experience. And they're doing better now. P- people are responding more and more to them. At least on the PC. On the console, it's, it's, a, it's a tougher sell. Because people, they're paying all this money for the console, the dedicated machine for gaming. They want to push the envelope on the power. They basically want these technolo- technological showcases, right? But the indie games, I'm seeing so many fun things that I really enjoy. And I promote the hell out of them. Like FTL, I think, is one of the best games I've ever played. Even though it doesn't look that impressive when you look at it, you know? Well, and... I think, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were seeing at PAX. And one of our big complaints was, <clears throat> you know, the tri- there were one or two AAA games there, or quote-unquote AAA games. Uh, the jury's still out on most of those. Uh, but uh, there was tons of indie stuff. But separating the signal from the noise was ridiculous because there were, you know, let's say 200 indie games there. Mm. And 150 of them were all uh, iterations on something we've already seen. There were only a handful that were original. And then out of that, there was only a few that uh, were actually 
interesting or fun to play. Yeah. And uh, that that was where I think our disappointment with PAX was because we were seeing a lot of Me Too crap. And, uh, you know, the rare gems were uh, very hard to find this year. So, yeah, um, see. And that and that's PC, Yogi. That's PC. That's iPad. That's you know every uh, device imaginable. There were some cool games there, but they were just you know they were they were lost in a sea of uh, crap. Well said. Yeah, see, that's an opportunity I think with the big studios and the indie developers. It's just that. There's a lot of Me Too kind of things, you know. They see something that catches on. I was like, well, let's make that, but we'll add one or two extra things, you know. Or we'll make it a little bigger or better. Um, that's kind of unavoidable. That's unfortunate when that happens. And obviously with indie games, we have uh, accelerated the release schedule. So we're getting overwhelmed with more content at a faster rate. And it's like, whoa. But, you know, the big studio releases are still, you know, they've slowed down. Finally, I'm actually happy for that. Because for a little while, it was like, you know, there were like 10 or 15 major releases coming out any given week. And it was just like, crap, I can't keep up with this stuff. You know, you, That's you, called you November. Pre-order... Yeah, exactly. Dude, for seriously. And it's like, you know, you, you might get all these games, but really, how much are you going to play them? You know, I get a lot of replay value out of these, you know, the, the simpler games a lot of times uh, and the indie games and the retro style games. I get a lot of more replay value out of them. But yeah, go ahead, Ovi. You, do you want to say something? Well, for I uh, no no keep go going. crazy keep going I'm looking in chat and and Stan Ferrara was talking the question would actually be for you guys is what would a next gen game be like a good one then so I've yeah, been he's, asking he's... that on the B team for the last two months <laughs> okay what I, is I, what is a uh, next gen game anything yeah. that's new and that's kind of what we're asking Maybe? that's kind of what we're asking now too I mean. I would like to see some new genres being explored, something other than FPS games, or something other than you know, uh, um, you know, kill people, you know, or run around with guns. I mean, that's cool, but uh, you know, th- there's a lot of things people have not been exploring with co-op opportunities, and people that usually don't like PvP will at least be co-op, and they still get that 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 fun you get out of a multiplayer experience without the caustic community, right? Because you get to play of, with your friends. Some type of persistent world, massively multiplayer game, I think, is where you have to start for next gen. Um, you know, you can ramp up the graphics. Um, I don't know, may, maybe better AI in mm. uh, NPCs or yes. computer-controlled characters. Uh, more complicated scenarios uh multiple you know the multiple ending things there was a panel i went to a few years ago at uh, it was at pax east and it was uh for this this great game i can't remember the name of it it was basically uh, an rpg cia spy type game and it was out on the 360 and the the ps3 and it got fair reviews which I actually really enjoyed the hell out of it. But about a year before it came out, they did this. uh, We lost your audio there briefly, Chip. What did you say? um, I'm back. Yes, yes. You were saying something about a game on the PC that had uh, branching storylines? Yes, it was on branching storylines. It was an RPG uh, that was a spy RPG, and I can't remember the name of the game right now. Uh, It got fair reviews. I actually thought it was a lot more fun than the reviews kind of made it out to be. But Mm. uh, the developer discussed uh, choice and, Mm. you know, how it branches out. And he says, you know, uh, when you look at 8-bit games, there was two answers and they both uh, would net the same result back in uh, the original 8-bit games. Now he goes, and then he goes, here's the tree for our game. And, you know, it was this gigantic uh, flow chart uh, showing 
a bajillion different uh, outcomes and endings uh, depending on what Ooh. you did. And like uh, kind of like what Mass Effect was supposed to be. <laughs> hmm? Yes, kind of, kind of like what Mass Effect. I mean, Mass Effect did have a good closure as far as the character development and, and the different ways those, the story, those individual storylines went. But then the ultimate right. ending, it didn't feel like anything you did really made a difference. It was kind of like Bioshock Infinite, that feeling of you know, different your choices have no no bearing on your destiny. You know yes. that pre predeterminism. But Chip, I gotta stop you for real quick because I love what you said about AI. That is one of my favorite parts in game design. I've, I've, and I used when I used to be into the game development pretty heavily. I, I used to love writing AI algorithms because getting that fuzzy logic and finding ways to create uh, an NPC or some some kind of entity that feels like they're human, but you know they're not. Why aren't people exploring that more? Like having. You know, like in, in the Resident Evil games, having the AI partner that isn't an idiot and isn't dying every, like, you know, 20 seconds, and you have to heal them, you know? that That's the kind of stuff we need to see to really say this is the next gen. I could give two shits about freaking virtual reality and extra polygons. We're past that. I, everything you said is on point. With the AI, uh, I love choice because choice and, and deep customization, is it, those are contributing factors to replay value and immersion. And immersion to the point where you get lost in the experience, and you're like, I don't want to be anywhere else. I'm, I'm, I'm in this, and that's it. That's he, that's he, definitely the next gen. Here's the definition of next gen: an escort mission that's actually fun. <laughs> well, 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 once well, you do that, uh, I think I think we, we the next generation will have arrived. Or, or I'll add to that espionage that's actually fun. Not just listening yeah. to someone or, or walking behind them, like making it like you really feel like you're a spy and it's fun, not just mundane crap. So anyway, so let's get out to the main event, our feature, uh -huh. which we've titled "Solving the Strategy Puzzle." And we set the stage because we, we're talking about how a lot, a lot of times, these simple games are more fun for us mm -hmm. and more immersive than these big budget games. And it's why we find ourselves playing games like League of Legends, Arma 2, which right now is kind of old when you look at the tech, but it's still fun. And it's still coming out with mods, you know, and, and, and extra content for it. League of Legends, you know, it's a simple game on the surface, but we're immersed in it. Hearthstone, Marvel Puzzle Quest, we go on. I mean, and also one of uh, Chip and uh, my, my uh, favorite games of all time, Hers Like Why. Just want to put that out okay. there. <laughs> yeah. That's a I love that game. We played that in college, and uh, uh, my roommate and I, uh, if he won, he would uh, play uh, Queens, We Are the Champions. And if I won, then I would play for him, Ray Charles is uh, Born to Lose. So, uh, <laughs> nice. And we, uh, yeah, that, that was just, that, that was fantastic gaming on the Genesis. Yeah, and it still holds up pretty well today. Um, I, I still recommend that people check out Airmech, the company that makes that game, or Carbon Games. They're good, they're good people. They've got they've hooked me up with review copies of the game a long time ago, and I gave away keys and everything. They're really cool, and they've captured the spirit of hers like his wife, but they gave it the facelift so more people can enjoy it. Because you know, graphic snobs, they're like, "Oh, this looks terrible." Yeah, I think I grabbed that over on the Google Play Store. Uh... A couple of years ago, and while I liked it, I, the controls just you know until you can put it on a on a joystick for me, yeah, it's got I'll a pass. Pack. It's a game pass. Yeah. game pass for it. Well, it probably does now. I mean, like I said, I yeah. played it a couple of years ago. It's really slick and responsive. They're still having some issues with the server load and and some lag, but. Uh... You should check it out because it's cross-platform. It's on Steam. It's, it's still free to play. And actually, now it's free to play, and uh, yeah. it's good. It's good, dude. And you can play against bots too. So, um, all right. So, we're gonna talk about Marvel Puzzle Quest. Um, so, just a quick few a few quick points to kind of recap what we've been leading up to this whole point. I think we can all agree that we're kind of on uh, a a, um, a shooter kind of burnout and big studio burnout right now. You know, we've kind of hit that that hit upon that point. Um, 
and and also I think we should you know set the stage further for Marvel Puzzle Quest and Hearthstone. Just because a game is simple on the surface does not mean the gameplay is easy or shallow. As we know, as we will see with Marvel Puzzle Quest, it is a deceptively simple game because there's actually layers to that thing like an onion, man. It's crazy. Um, you know, and, and and the thing as we go through this that we should all ask ourselves is what what is it that makes strategy games so satis- so satisfying for us? Because I would consider Marvel Puzzle Quest a strategy game because you you have to be cognizant of the things that are behind working behind the scenes. You can play it willy nilly, you're not gonna get very far. You have to understand no. team compositions and counters and all kinds of stuff. You have to have a game plan, and I like I like that part a lot. Um, another concept that I like everybody to think about is when you look at a game, especially a strategy game, how much of it is skill versus luck, you know, versus uh, pay to win or, you know, fast tracking. <laughs> you know, how can you tip the scale in uh, in your favor, basically? And uh, we, we talk about this over on our site, geekyantics.net. But, uh, okay, Chip, I know you're phoning me at the mouth. Give us some uh, Marvel uh, Puzzle Quest uh, strategies. First of all, all right. well, well, let's put let's it in a way. Tra- wait, go ahead, go ahead. Let, let's uh, let's at least uh, d- uh, describe the game for those that don't know what it is. And okay. uh, yeah, just a quick plug. I did a interview with D- uh, Demiurge uh, about the game at Paxi. So you can go see the video on. Uh, the bteampodcast.com dot com, and we did it like I said, a twenty minute interview with questions from our alliance members and Facebook. Um, but that didn't really get into the strategy of the game. This is a match three game. The idea being, you have a team of three Marvel heroes, and you are pitting them against another team of three Marvel heroes. Uh, these heroes are either, uh, if you're playing a uh, one of the PVE events are a team put together by the computer. If it's player versus player, it's asynchronous multiplayer. Uh, you're not actually playing in real time against somebody like you would be in Hearthstone. This is their team of three uh, that the computer is playing for them versus your team of three, which you're playing live. Um, the idea is match three or more of the same color together, either horizontally or vertically. Um, if you get certain combos, uh, of, of five or four, it has additional benefits on the screen by ma- matching various colors. You build up attack points in that color. And if your hero and your hero has abilities, and you as- you spend these attack points to use their various abilities to take out the other uh, team's characters. Is that the game in je- uh, in a nutshell, Yogi? Yeah, I think that covers everything. And I think what makes it more than just a match three is the fact mm-hmm. that the abilities make you play the, a pu- yeah. the puzzle board completely different because you either... Th- you have to think about starving your opponent so they don't get the towels they need to do something really painful to you. <laughs> or you think about the, the color towels you need, the matches you need to do something really cool yourself. And, right. you know, as you're going to, I know you're going to get into, the when you start thinking about all the different team compositions and how there's synergies between different people that you may not think would otherwise work, like, mm. you know, bad guy villains working with heroes you know and you find ways to like kind of break the meta and make them do vicious things like we were talking about uh you know combining storm with like um uh black widow and that cycle that happens where they just keep stealing all your cut your towels away Mm -hmm. and you can't do crap because it's just like an endless loop once they get it off you know stuff like that (laughs) this could be really game breaking um yeah and i've actually that's why the the sto- the single star storm character is still a pretty good character to have, um, yeah. because somebody has found that, and I've been running into that uh, combination quite a bit lately. Um, what? Uh, yes, I think I, I think uh, w- the the joy of the game is well. First of all, a lot of times it will force you into using or limiting what characters you can use. 
which causes you to have to come up with new strategies and combos uh, to beat uh, the other team, uh, which, which I think is part of why I enjoy this game so much is because they keep adding additional characters, and now you have different dynamics that you can work with and build slowly. Uh, the other thing being uh, some, uh, you know, an obsessive compulsive, I need all the characters, I need to max them all, and you are always in the quest for additional covers. You can only level a character uh, so far until you get additional covers uh, for that character. Each character can have up to 13 covers on them. And, and um, one star max out at 50, two star max out at 85, and uh, three star max out at 141. There are some four star characters. We don't have to really worry about those. They're very rare um, and pretty useless. Agreed. Um, so, Those are more collectibles right now than anything else, right? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's your e-penis. That's all it is. Yep. You know, um, so at this point, uh, the I, so I, once you start getting into that and once you build up a, a decent roster and can start working out various combos, uh, that's where the game really takes on its uh, a, a new focus. At first, I think you're just surviving and probably playing through the prologue missions and grinding and building up your initial characters is a great place to start. Uh, then you start adding the two-star and the three-star characters as you randomly pick up some of these cards. And then you start seeing new ideas and new possibilities on how to combine characters. And I think that's where it gets pretty addictive. Um, what I tell everybody who starts playing the game is if you have, if you get any hero coins at the beginning of the game or earn them in the game, immediately just throw them into roster spots. Do never buy revives, never buy a lock, and never buy a random card. Yep. You will get, Agreed. you will get plenty of cards through various drops, your Facebook friends. You will get plenty of ISO, which is what you use to level characters. Uh, there is no reason for you to waste money on revives. Just have some patience. Your characters will revive. Um, yeah. you, there is no reason for you to buy a lock. And uh, take, because there are right now, I think, what, 39 characters available? Yeah, 39. Um <clears throat> Well, I think yeah. Nick Fury makes it 40, right? That'll make Coming it 40, out. and the new yeah. Dakin will make it 41. They're doing oh, a three-star Dakin. Um, yeah, D and Dakin is, a, is another one that's pretty underrated because he has a lot of staying power. Like with him, yeah, well, like he's got durability. I, I've never, I've never leveled him. Well, I, you know, I've never really used him or leveled him to something useful. Well, see, I have him maxed out, and what I do is I mm -hmm. run him with people with a team that he does has a lot of green and red mm -hmm. abilities, mm -hmm. because then what happens is he might tank the damage from the enemies, and if he's just right. taking basic attack damage, even from high mm -hmm. level, you know, one forty ones or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, three stars or four stars, he's he's he he could recover from those attacks as long as you keep your opponent starved from being able to get the big moves out, he can mm -hmm. recover because he get that that uh. He he's like the the old Wolverine used to be. Remember when he used to like heal every turn? Now they got yeah. rid of that. And it's only yeah. when he's at fifty percent or less you got to get a yellow match. And right. you know, for people that's been around the game, they they might be nostalgic about that. But that game is actually pretty good. He's he's a tank. Yeah. Well, from what you guys um, are and what you guys are saying about this, real quick. I mean, sorry, I just want to chime in here for a mm -hmm. second. What you guys are saying about this, it actually does sound kind of interesting. I've been looking at it on the other screen over here. Um, it's almost it's almost Candy Crush, it looks like. <laughs> Sorry. It, it is, but it's Candy Crush for smart people. Oh, then I'm ne definitely not going to play it then. <laughs> the, 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 you know, I played Candy Crush for six months. I got up to level 410 or 420, something like that. Um so I mean I was a uh 
I was a big fan of that. The, where this gets interesting is you're actually battling other people uh, and just, you know, the different abilities certainly uh, brings new dynamics to it. But, uh, yeah, my first tip is, uh, you know, just take any hero coins you get and just buy roster spots because they get expensive very fast. And I know people who have dropped out of the game because, well, you know, I, I can't I don't have enough hero coins to add this character. No. Um, so, well, first of all, if you're enjoying the game. There's no reason why you can't drop five bucks and pick up 600 hero coins, and that'll get you a few more roster spots. Uh, you will eventually be earning enough uh, hero coins where uh, I don't know if you'll be able to afford, you know, I mean, right now another roster spot for me is something like 500 hero coins. But um, you can certainly earn a decent amount of hero coins once you start leveling up your characters. And, you know, if you enjoy a game like this, if you enjoy a game like Hearthstone, uh, you know, these guys don't work for free. There's, you know, this is what they're doing. to. They made this game uh, in order to make money, to put food on the table for their people. If you enjoy the game, support the game. Uh, and, you know, even if you give them five bucks every two months, you know, that's cool. If you're still playing the game and you're still enjoying it, you should do something like that. Um, ne never buy ISO. <laughs> if you're going <laughs> to spend money on the game, just just buy Hero Coins. Yep. Um, yep. And then, like I said, uh, you know, I, I've seen people say, well, you know, I'm thinking of dropping this character or that character. Well, if you've spent all that ISO and you've... Uh, gone through all the uh, pain of leveling that character up, there's no way I would ever drop it. And there are certain events where they require some of the more underpowered or obscure characters and force you to play with them. So, I, you know, and I just see it as another option uh, when, I, when I'm playing the game. <laughs> I know my uh, this opponent that has a you know level one characters. Let me use some of my scrubs and save uh, the big guns for later. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I personally will, you know, if for some reason I was that low on hero coins, and I will be shortly. Um, and if I got another character that I need, uh, if a new new character was released and I got him. I would have no problem dropping five, six bucks to get enough hero coins to open a slot for him. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> because that usually means they're going to be featured in uh, the next event or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't have your show notes open here, Yogi. Um, you have well, any other tips for noobs, Yogi? Yeah, I think that, you know, we've talked about this before. When, like I said, last time you were on the show, we talked about this. You know, as far as the free play game, there's a lot of bitterness mm -hmm. about, oh, I don't want to have to pay money. It's supposed to be free to play. Well, I'm, I'm in between. I agree. These are hard. To, they have to make the money somehow. It's free to play. Can watch to try it out and see if you like it before you spend money. And then mm -hmm. you tip them. It's like tipping any anyone in any kind of service. Mm -hmm. But, um... What I like about Marvel Puzzle Quest is that you don't have to spend that money. You play it smart, but you get to a point where you want to because you're thoroughly enjoying it. And you're not just being slammed in the face with a paywall like that prevents you. It's not a forced obstacle, you know, where it's like you can only progress if you spend this much money. It's not like that at all. If you play smart, you know, like just like you suggested, save your hero coins. I did that from day one. I never used hero coins for anything other than opening up slots because I knew they were going to be few far in between. They've gotten better about that too, because now the tournament, all the events are giving lots of hero coins and ISO and covers. It's actually a really good time to come on because during the when it was a close, when it was the preview edition, you know, kind of like the open beta kind of thing going on, the, the they they barely gave out like good rewards. It was kind of scarce, and the only thing you could really do back then was play the kind of campaign. But now they have so many opportunities between the lightning rounds 
and the different PvP events. This is a great time. And the Alliance thing is even more fun because now you have other people working in tandem to do the same thing. And, and you you encourage each other a lot. Mm-hmm. The negative thing about it, as you mentioned before, Chip, is that you get the people that are really competitive. And this might be the only game they play. So they have that expectation. They have to be top 10 or top 20, you know. And I personally don't see how that's possible. I've gotten top 10, top 20 a few times. Very few times. I probably count on one hand how many times I've done it. And it was a lot of work to get there. And, of course, that was also before. I think it was before you could lock in and shield up and all that stuff, right? But now I usually get in, like, top 50 or top 100 at the very least. And I think that's good, considering when there's thousands of players out there. <laughs> well, you got to remember. Invest in? Well, what I, point is going to be? What kind of time thing it, hmm? What kind of time investment should people expect to get to I, that level of competition? <laughs> where it's still, you know, where it can still be fun. It. Wait for oh, it. Oh, I'm... Uh... You probably are. I mean, it's it's going to take you a while, a to get the good characters. Uh, I would say it's going to probably take you a good twenty hours before you have a where you have because you're going to want a team of at least two star characters, mm-hmm. probably fair, fairly high level. And I think, well, I think the idea is as you will slowly. You'll, you know, maybe the first few tournaments you're in the top 500, and all you're getting are maybe one or two standard covers uh, as an award. But then you're into the top 200, and now you're getting a heroic cover, and you know you're building up that those characters, and you know eventually you make the top 100 and the top 50. You know, you were talking about making the how well you were doing. Last week, I was, I think it was last week's Punisher event. Um, yeah, well, I think the Punisher event was last week. Um, I uh busted ass on Friday and I locked in uh my score of 1100. Guy in first place was at 1300. I was getting hammered because as you get higher up there, uh, they start throwing you out to every player to try and it attack yep. you and yep. basically i was it was getting to the point where i was i was losing more points than i was winning because i was getting attacked so quickly so i finally broke 1100 and immediately uh locked down and you know which does cost tarot coins but i was like i got six hours to go i'm just gonna lock at 1100 and you know, we'll we'll see what happens. If I need to jump in in the last half hour, uh, because I'm close to the two spot or the one or two spot, fine. Uh, but uh, I don't know what the hell happened. With less than one minute to go, I was ahead. I was in second place. With the guy behind, me, the guy behind me was at least fifty points uh, behind me. Uh, the match ended, the results came in about 15 minutes later, and somehow I had dropped from set two to the top five. I don't know what the hell. I, I was pretty pissed about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, you, you freaking blink an eye, and you dropped down several places. It's crazy. But I, but I was locked. I mean, if, if, if I wasn't locked, yes. But there All was right, nobody yeah, with it. You know, and that's the weird. other guy that was trying to cu- take – take over actually lost uh his last match in the last five minutes because i was sitting there monitoring it and uh you know watching where his place was going and it's like okay i have him by 50 points with one minute with less than a minute to go there's no way he can overtake me so i don't know what the hell happened but um you know but yes i think that's part of the mystique of the game is as you start playing, uh, you know you're not you're gonna get your ass kicked uh, while while you're leveling up, but you're gonna have that progression where uh, now you're getting a two star character, and now you've built your Wolverine from level six up to level twenty five, and 
he's doing a lot more. And well, now I got another card for him that adds another ability or enhances uh, one of his previous abilities. And now he's becoming a real kick-ass character. Uh, so I think that's, you know, that that's what I think is the mystique of the game. But I think it's going to take you some time to get there. Um, I'm looking at our uh, shows here. Leveling up with minimal grinding. Um, what? So I was. This is something that one of uh, our uh, alliance members was asking. How, how how do I get the levels up quickly? Um, the best thing to do is hit one of the versus events within the within uh, the first few minutes that it starts. Because you can get, uh, you will get uh, matches against some very, very low characters. It'll be the featured yeah. character, and the other two members of his team will be level one. And you, and yep. <laughs> you, so you can get a hundred ISO uh, or a hundred points in the tournament very quickly, and probably rack up six or seven hundred uh, ISO. Uh, within that within that time period, and 200 isn't a stretch in in these instances. And uh, at the same time, not only are you getting ISO, you're earning uh, additional covers, additional boosters. So it's an it's an easy way to get more characters and get the uh, ISO you need to level them up. I think that's the easiest way, wouldn't you say, uh, Yogi? Yeah, I like I like doing the lightning rounds because, like you said, yep. uh, that you get less rewards when you fight those lower level teams and newbie teams, but you could do it much faster, and it ends up being better than fighting the guys that are much tougher. And it might give slightly more rewards, but you're getting beat up and you're getting less of a of a run because your guys are all exhausted or dead. So it's better to just kind of pick on the newbies a bit, the lowbies a bit, and get those rewards. Pick pick on the noobs, be, when, and you're not really getting all that much more for the bigger guys. Not not you're the not, first yeah. couple. Uh, pretty much it, the first battle is 25 points, or 20, yep. you know, it's somewhere between 25 and 30 points. Take the points and take the ISO and uh, do and that's and just do that and. Like I said, in 10, 15 minutes, you'll have a, you'll be at 100 points in the tournament, and you'll have gotten three rewards, plus you'll have played probably four battles and racked up, you know, six, 700 uh, ISO probably. Um, I think that's what point whoring was as well. So somebody, yeah, <laughs> somebody reworded my, my stuff on me. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys should put point whoring, and I was, and I put, but is it really? Because I don't know what you were trying yeah. to go for for that. Because I, I was thinking like you know, just like grinding and then being, you know, kind of sitting in the corner, mine. <laughs> And, you know, uh, and I don't know how you do it. And I think this is one of the things I was going to ask you, Obi, because I talked to a couple of people who have different theories on leveling up. Uh, what are you doing? Are you doing a scattershot approach of leveling everybody at the same time? You focusing on characters? It's, I'm pulling up uh, your... Uh, it's basically... I'm going to pull up your roster. It's basically... Wait, what? I'm pulling up Yogi's roster. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you actually asked Obi what's he doing. What, what are oh, you doing with the character, oh, Obi? <laughs> um, I'm uh, making sure that this guy is in this position, and um, yeah. yeah, playing that one spider guy, and then, uh, and then playing <laughs> that one guy that has the big tongue and it goes like that. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, am I, that's good. Am I doing you it right? Keep it up. <laughs> Am I doing it? You're doing it so, wrong. Yogi, oh, what, 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 it looks like uh, you're working on maxing out all your characters. Yeah, what I do, it, it's very situational. Um, mm -hmm. There's certain, there's, a, there's a few guys that I have dog-eared as, like, I know they're go-to guys. But um, depending where I'm at during an event, like, let's say my top guys are taken out, 
and I see someone that could be a good player, I start investing in, you know, the ISO and them so they can mm. be more serviceable for that scenario, especially if they have a boost for that scenario and they get mm. the extra HP and damage or if they're just good for that kind of objective. Like, for example, we talked about this part too where if there's uh, a lot of special tiles that the enemy team is using, um, you might want to have some removal or something where like Moonstone has where she could take over the enemy's uh, tiles and make it a friendly tile, right? So you end up healing your team or doing or taking their bomb and using it against them, right? Um, mm-hmm. Or or um, uh, Black Wid- Widow, the the evil version of her, I forget her name, Yel- Yelena. She's got the whole thing where she could turn the special tiles into critical tiles, and it's actually very effective. Uh, the thing is, she doesn't have she doesn't have much durability. So yeah, I, I looked at the situations and I kind of scatter shot it, like you said. But I do have a few guys that like I'm working on, like Aries. I'm pretty close to, to maxing. I like him a lot because uh, he's got the he's got a lot of burst damage. He's got uh, self heal ability, kind of <laughs> he, like the little suicide attack he does. And then he also has the attack that attacks the entire enemy team. So I kind of like having that flexibility kind of like storm storm could do single target damage or she could do target damage to the whole team enemy team you know but unfortunately she's also not very durable but she's very powerful so look looking at your team the one you should focus right now on fishnet widow yeah the original what it. you have her up to 70 yeah, she, she is probably the key character in the entire game. Oh, I love her. You know, heals and steals. Yeah, I would. Ac- yep. I would actually. Uh, what I would actually do is I would, looking at yours, I'd drop the black down to three and have uh, it, the purple at five, the blue at five, and the black at three. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, so she because because I, she inspired. I wasn't getting- I haven't gotten covers for the uh, mm-hmm. the reason that it's set up like that is because those are the covers they got. Yeah, I know, I know the that blue, the, feeling. Yeah, the blue and the pink is the, by far her best. Yeah, because that's the she's the, the stealing and her healing. Yeah, the stealing the blue is maxed out though, right? I have it at five. No, the purple's maxed out. Oh, I don't have the blue. Yeah, I haven't got enough covers for that. But yeah, Fisherman is definitely one of my top ones that I'm gonna so. him, her and 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 Aries because that she keeps the whole team alive by healing. Yep. And, and she when can also you, increase the timer on the countdown tiles. Yes. So so I, I find <laughs> I find her indispensable. And yeah. Uh, the the other one that's really great, and you're kind of in the same spot I was uh, for a long time, except you got uh, blue instead. At where I couldn't get a blue uh, cover to save my life. Uh, the three star Spider Man. The two of yeah. them uh, are my uh, healers. Widow yep. and three star Spider Man. Um, one of the other thing things is I the way they choose which characters your opponent is going to go up against with you uh, is uh, it's it's your top three characters, yeah. you know. And I'm sure you've been in events and you'll go to bed and you're you've got 500 points. You're in. 25th place you're feeling pretty good you wake up in the morning uh you've been attacked 20 times you've lost 150 points and you're now around the 200th spot yeah know that feeling obi (laughs) you keep saying obi (laughs) i'm sorry yogi (laughs) well that's what we get for having names that rhyme yes dude i call him (laughs) i call him Obizilla all the time. Okay. Yeah. Obizilla, there we go. And that's his own name. He's messing yeah, yeah I, I'm, so, I'm totally with that. So, um, well, now that I have my characters, it, you know, and I was talking to somebody else who likes to, you know, spread the love out. Uh, now that I have three characters at 141. Mm-hmm. The, the the intimidation factor has really kicked in. Yeah, and people don't want people, to attack you anymore. People don't attack me. Yeah, and even if and when they do, um, I would say it's a fifty fifty shot. 
as to whether or not I win. I've woken up some mornings, and instead of being down 85, 90 points, I'm up 30. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. that that's kind of cool. Uh, so I, my recommendation is level your characters to, as either to their max or to whatever their cap is because it cuts down on the p number of people that attack you. Yeah. The problem, um, what, part of the reason I haven't, I love Black Widow, uh, the fish of Black Widow, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, almost, we're almost out of time, so we're going to um, yeah. wrap this up, but uh, we definitely have to get you back out and talk some more strategy. Um, and you know we're coming out with a new show where we're gonna, all we're going to do is talk strategy. No, no news or any other crap, just hardcore mm -hmm. in it. But um, until that time, we just, we'll just share this here. But I, I, I love Black Widow, the fishnet. It's just that one, the, my one issue with her is she doesn't scale as much. So when I put the ISO into her, it is not getting me extra HP, and the powers are only getting a little bit higher for like her damage mm -hmm. per, per tile type or color, and her ability is only scaling a little bit. And they, it's so expensive now. So I'm waiting for like the next time when I get like nine or ten k ISO, so I could do a few levels at once. I can't stand like doing a little tiny bit and not getting a full bar or at least a th right. like three levels out of it. You know, it's tedious to me. I want to see that ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, but, I uh, understand that. Yeah, but see, I Black Black Widow, Fisher Black Widow. You you saw the screenshot I put in the, in the group, the Facebook group. I love her. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's one of my lineups that I had in there. But I know we wanted to talk about Hearthstone. I think we got like mm -hmm. what eleven minutes left, uh, Ob. Nine. Nine. Okay, we, we'll talk about it real quick, and then we'll do our our shameless plugs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what will be just good. But uh, I just want to share a few quick things about Hearthstone because similar, it's a similar experience. At, like from what you see in Marvel Puzzle Quest, people get discouraged and they drop out because they feel it's too much of a grind or it's a pay to win thing because they're approaching it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the fundamentals of it. And, you know, like, I, there's like a guy I just introduced over at All Games, Opti. You know him, uh, uh, Chip. Opti mm -hmm. decided to spend like 100 bucks in the game. Like, this is the most expensive free-to-play game I, I have had. And I'm like, uh, that's because you chose to. I, 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 haven't paid, uh, I haven't spent any money in the game yet. And I, and I beat him. And he's got all these legendary cards and everything, the Hearthstone. So, and there's other people that do the same thing. And they're like legendary rank uh, in, in Hearthstone. So it's doable. This is what I'm going to say. Focus on the easy classes first. There's certain classes you probably want to stay away from in Hearthstone. Um, and I find personally that Rogue, uh, Mage, Paladin, uh, and probably Warrior are the hardest ones to play as when you're first starting off. Warlock, uh, Priest, and maybe Shaman are the easiest. Oh, and Druid, and and we're not, but, uh, but, hmm. you know, and we're not saying that they're hard because of just they're hard. Um, they're you have to know what happens to be able to combo your cards together. That's really the only that's the only reason why we're not we're saying they're hard because you actually have to do extra things and know what things do, know when to wait on a card and when right, not right. to kind of thing. Yeah, that's the thing. If you don't have, like, you don't want to start off with those guys unless you understand the, the fundamentals and, like, you know, basic deck building things. And you're at least familiar enough with the game where you've seen some of the basic combos people pull out and understand the current meta. Because those, those like, Mage right now in the current meta is not very serviceable unless you're playing against someone that has really good cards or you're in arena. In constructed play, if you're playing uh, ranked or casual, mm -hmm. uh, Mage is really hard to play with. And that's who they start you off with. Because with Mage, you either have to commit to minions or spells, you know, one or the other. You can have a little bit of minions and a spell deck, but you really need to just go full out aggro and just fireball to the face and have board control if you're going to mm -hmm. do mage. And a lot of people can't figure out that play style. Most people just want to get creatures out and, and then swarm someone and punch them in the face with the minions. And that doesn't always work either, though aggro decks are very easy to put together. So that's one of the things is, is, is try to try the different classes out uh, in casual mode and just have an open mind about it. Play against some friends and try out the different classes and find the ones that are easiest for you. I'm just saying, though, I think Warlock might be one of the easiest and Priest because they have the, sim the most useful abilities, mm -hmm. if you really think about it. You can heal yourself, buy yourself a little extra time, or heal a creature that you don't want it to die. 
with the pet with priest or with the warlock, you get card draw. And that's the biggest issue in all these deck building games is when you don't have enough cards in your hand or the right cards in your hand. You get free card draw by sacrificing two life. That's always useful in almost any scenario, unless you're low on life. Um, so you don't have to spend money. It doesn't have to be this thing where pay to win. You just have to understand, find your niche, and then when you, the more you play with certain classes, the more cards you unlock. Once you unlock the basic cards, you get... Once you have to do, hit level 10 with the class, and you get the 10 basic cards added on to the core deck. So that's a total of 20 basic cards. Once you have those 20 basic cards to work with, a lot of options open up. And some of those basic cards could do really evil things to even legendary cards. Like, uh, for example, a priest has uh, mind control, and he could take over a legendary card and put him on his side. So you don't own that legendary card, but now that minion is your bitch. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Someone that's spending money in the game or, or lots of time in the game could do pull up that kind of thing. Um, I mean, what else can we say before we uh, try to wrap this up? I don't know. How are we on time, Obi? Uh, we got about five minutes. That's total. Okay. Well, one so, of the I mean, things I just, yeah. I've learned uh, at this point, uh, and, you know, I've unlocked the characters. I have access to the arena. I have no business going into the arena and <laughs> that I, the only thing I should be doing at this point is buying packs of cards. And I just find uh, I the, the frustrating part about the game is earning gold in this game is a bitch. Yeah. You know, and they're, compared- working, they're working on that with the expansion that's coming up. They're going to make it easier to do that kind of stuff. So it's not so much of a grand What it's like ten gold every three wins. Yeah, and then the, okay, and the daily biggest, quest. Yeah, and the daily quest. Yep, and you can have up to three queued up at a time. You can also swap out some of those if you don't like them. By the way, right. but what's your biggest issue? Like, like, if there's one question I can answer for you, I know you don't like the deck building as much. That part's tricky, and that's always going to be tricky for people. They're no, not I'm familiar. actually getting into that, and I. Okay. It's just you know it's okay what's the best way for me to obtain these cards is it going into the arena and trying to win battles there and it's like no i got to walk before i can run and that's probably yeah you know when i get there but at this point it's like okay yeah. uh basically to any gold i get i should just be dumping into decks at this point and arena it's just like, would be the best bang for your buck if you could win two or three matches at least. And you can win a yeah. maximum of 10. It's the best bang for your buck. It's better than buying a card pack. But you do need to learn the fundamentals. And it, the good thing about it is... you need the cards. Well, you, you, see, that's the you thing. You need some cards. Yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot of cards. And you could craft some of them. Once you find the class that really works with you... Like, what are you running, yeah. Chip? Which class uh, do you run? I'm still... Which you have the best success with? I'm uh, probably, you know, I, I'll go against what you said. I would probably say Hunter and Warrior were the two I was doing best. Oh, with. yeah. I forgot. Hunter. Yeah. How could I forget? That's one of the best ones to start with, too, because he's aggro. Yeah. Hunter, stick with a Hunter. Right now in the meadow, a lot of people are running Hunter now because he's just, he's so nasty. You go with some beasts and a little bit of control so you can have board clear and stuff, and you'll love the Hunter. And maybe craft the Unleash the Hounds, stuff like that. Uh, Hunts is the, a very good way to go, but you know you, you, what you could do is um, use arcane dust. You could um, take some cards, gold cards, convert them to. Um, you need to, to earn the. You you have to get the gold cards first, Yogi. You get them by leveling up, by just yeah. playing the game. You know what? Op- you know you know. Not Op- See, now I was going to call you Obi. Chip, we'll play together. We'll we'll talk All about right. we'll talk about it afterwards and get deep in All it, right. and we'll probably revisit this because we talk about Hearthstone quite a bit lately. So people were right. saying, "Is your site a Hearthstone site?" No, not not really. We just love the game. But unfortunately, OB, gentlemen, quick tips? We, I don't have. We got to cut. Go. Unfortunately, gentlemen, we do have to get out of here. We do have two minutes, so I do want to give out a couple of good shout outs, big shout outs to our new cover on geekyantics.net. To the Death Gaming Podcast. The links are right there on the screen for you guys. You guys Gaming Death. Gaming Death. Gaming Death. I do apologize. That's twitch.tv forward slash gaming death. You guys can check him out at 9 o'clock on Thursdays, right before horseplay. So uh, you guys can, you know, you guys can get double dose right out, right? We'll see you guys right here next Thursday, as always. I'm not done doing Shamus plugs. I'm just doing whatever. 
Horseplay Replays is on allgames.com every Thursday around 5 p.m. Eastern time. We know that a lot are hoping that we'd be uh, we'd be the B-team warm-up, <clears throat> but unfortunately just didn't work out that way. They do have something coming in that's pretty special, I hear, uh, on all games at the 7 o'clock hour right before the B-team. So uh, we're looking forward to that as well. Um, regardless, please show love. Show your support with uh, especially allgames.com because we love everybody there and how they're supporting us. So we want you guys, of course, as our fans and even the – most of uh, the people that are live with us every Thursday are from all games, which we that's that's awesome right there. We also want you guys to check out our friends. Whoa. Okay, check out our friends at G Gaming Death Podcast, 42 Level 1 Gaming History 101, the B Team Podcast, Chip Hoo Hoo, R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, Agents of Shield Cast, Chip Hoo Hoo. Sega Nerds, The Angry Chicken, Castuberous Doctor Who Podcast, Orange, Orange Lounge Radio. I almost said that wrong. And the Party Chat shows all on All Games Network, uh, Gang.net. We have lots of great content for our, our team at GeekyAntics.net as well and GeekyAntics.com. You guys can see all that right there on the screen. And where am I at? If you are listening to us on all games, B Team is coming up next. We'll see you guys here. Be sure to tune in live at 9 p.m. Eastern time for that B game at B Team. And of course, if you guys can hit two up, of course we have our uh, our uh, our show that's before us as well at nine o'clock. So, Yogi, what you got left for us, buddy? Before we get out of here, nothing much. Uh, Chip, you got any, anything else left to uh, pimp? No, that's it. Check out the bteampodcast.com for links to all our videos from PAX. Definitely. All right, guys. This is Obi-1X2. Right here. All right. At Horseplay. We will see you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>